The last part of our lesson on sketching by intercepts is a word problem. It says a grasshopper jumps off a log along the arc H at D, which is just notation. H at D just means height. It's just a different way of writing it. It's not H times D. It's just called function notation. So height, or H at D, equals negative 4 x squared plus 12 x plus 7, where H is the vertical height of the grasshopper above the ground, and D is the horizontal distance traveled by the grasshopper in inches, which means that those x's, I think, really should be D's. Okay, so the first part of the question, if I just zoom in, says sketch the quadratic that represents the grasshopper's jump. And in order to do that, I need to sketch by intercepts, since that's the only way we've learned how to sketch so far. And to do that, we need the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the vertex. So what I want to do is I want to start by factoring. And I am just going to write h instead of h at d. It doesn't matter. Is negative 4 d squared plus 12d plus 7. And I see that this is a trinomial, so I'm going to try to do decomposition. And I'm going to multiply the first and the last, so negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 28, and they also need to add to the middle term of 12. So things that multiply to 28 would be 1 and 28. That's not going to work. 2 and 14, that might be good. And 7 and 4, which is not going to work. So we're going to choose positive 14 and negative 2. And that's going to give me a product of negative 28. And that's also going to add to 12. So we're going to expand this a bit to say negative 4d squared plus, I think I'm actually going to put the 2 with that one. So minus 2d plus 14d plus 7. Out of the first pair, I can take out a negative 2 and a d. And we're going to be left with 2, right? Negative 2 times 2 is 4, and a d. And then out of the second one, that's just going to be a 1. From the second pair, I can take out a 7. And I'm also going to be left with 2d plus 1. So. In factored form, we have 2d plus 1 and negative 2d plus 7. So to sketch this, what we need to do is we need to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the vertex. So to find the x-intercepts, what we do is we look at the factored form and we take each bracket and figure out what makes it equal 0. So 2d plus 1, make that equal 0 and negative 2d plus 7, make that equal 0. So here we're going to subtract 1 to the other side to get 2d equals negative 1, and then divide both sides by 2, which is going to give me negative 1 half. Now, it's nice to have the fraction. It is a word problem, however, so when we're doing a word problem, I am okay with you using a decimal, so if you would like to do that that is negative 0.5, that is okay. Okay, for the 2d, negative 2d plus 7, I'm going to take the 7 to the other side. You could actually take the negative 2d to the other side to make it positive, but I think for now I'm going to leave it on this side. Take the 7 over by subtracting to get negative 7, and then divide that by negative 2. When you divide a negative by a negative, you do get a positive, so we would end up with positive 7 over 2, or that would be a positive 3.5 if we did it as a decimal. Okay. Now, I'm not going to start my graph yet. There is no um, axes on here, so what I would like to do is figure out how high the grasshopper uh, hopper actually went before I draw the graph on. Um, I don't want to not leave enough space. So I'm actually going to move on and I'm going to do my y-intercept. To do the y-intercept, we take our equation and we sub in y equals 0. So I'm going to say h equals negative 4 times 0 squared plus 12 times 0 plus 7. So 0 squared is 0 times negative 4 is 0. 12 times 0 is 0. So 0 plus 0 plus 7 is 7. So my y-intercept is going to be 7. And then the last part we need to do is our vertex. To 
find the x part of the vertex, we want to find the midpoint between our two x-intercepts. It's easier if I use the decimals here. So I'm going to add them together and divide by 2. Now negative 0 0.5 plus 3.5 is 3. So this is going to be either the fraction 3 over 2 or that would be 1.5 if we did it as a decimal. Now to find the y part of the vertex, we're going to take either that 3 over 2 or the 1.5 and sub it into the equation. I think it might be a little easier if we do the 1.5. So I'm going to do y equals negative 4 times 1.5 squared plus 12 times 1.5 plus 7. 1.5 squared is 2.25, and 2.25 times 4, negative 4, is negative 9. Now 12 times 1.5 is positive 18, and then plus 7. Negative 9 plus 7 is negative 2, plus 18 would give me 16. So the vertex is going to be at 3 over 2 and 16, or 1.5 and 16. So when I go to do the graph, I know that I need to hit 16 on my y-axis, which means I really do need to leave enough space. Um, when I counted out the grid, I found that there were 25 squares. So I think if I leave 5 empty squares or 4 empty squares at the bottom, that should still leave me enough room to get all the way up to 16. And then I do have a negative y-x-intercept of negative 1 half or negative 0.5, so I am going to leave a little bit of space but I'm going to put the x-axis a little closer on the left so that I have a little bit more room over here for my graph. So uh, to do the scale on my x-axis, since I'm graphing and I have decimals that are 0.5s, I think on my x-axis, instead of just doing every square is 1, I'm going to do every square is 0.5. So this is 0 and then 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, and then keep going. That way my graph will just be spread out a little bit and easier to see. And then I'll do the negatives as well. And then on the y-axis, because I do have to reach 16, I don't have a choice. I need to do every square is 1. So I'm only going to mark on probably the 5s or the 2s so that it's a little easier to read the graph. Maybe we'll do the 2s. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then 20 at the top. And then I have negative 2 and negative 4 that I can mark on at the bottom. Make that a little bit bigger for you. Okay? So on my graph, I'm going to start by marking on my x-intercepts. My x-intercepts were negative 0 0.5, which is going to be this little first square here on the x-axis, and 3.5, which is going to be halfway between 3 and 4. My y-intercept is 7, which should be up here between 6 and 7 on the y-axis. And my vertex is 1.5, so halfway between 1 and 2, and positive 16, so way up here. Now to make it a little bit better graph, I do always like to put that mirror point in. So from the middle or the axis of symmetry, I see that it's 3 points. Um, to the left to get to the y-intercept, so I'm going to go three points to the right just to mark on the mirror point so that I can make a slightly better graph. And I'm just going to turn this around for a second because I'm better at drawing it this way. And there's the parabola. Right? So part of this is going to represent what the grasshopper is doing and part of it is not, but this is the parabola y equals negative 4d squared plus 12d plus 7. So to answer some of the questions, it would help if I drew in a couple of things. It's asking questions about how far does the grasshopper jump, how high does the grasshopper jump. So it would help if I knew where the grasshopper was in the picture. And in the question it did say that the height is the height above the ground, which means that this part down here where the x-axis is is the ground okay and it says d is the distance traveled by the grasshopper so if I want to find the grasshopper the grasshopper is going to be found where the distance between 
um, the start and where he is is zero. So that means that the grasshopper is actually here, got a lot of legs, at uh, the y-intercept. So the grasshopper is going to start at a distance of zero, right, at the y-intercept, which means he doesn't float in the air. He must be sitting on the log, and then he jumps, okay? So when he is jumping, it says how far from the log does the grasshopper land? So if I take a look, he jumps up, comes down, and he lands 3.5 meters, nope, 3.5 inches, away from where the log is. And we're just doing a horizontal distance there. So it's gonna be 3.5 inches away. The second question says, how high is the grasshopper at its highest point? So the highest point would be here at the very top of the vertex, which is 16. So it is 16 inches high. Okay, the next question says, how tall is the log? So the grasshopper is standing on the log when he starts, and he starts at a y-intercept of seven, which means that that log is seven inches tall. And the very last part says, state the domain and range for the relevant part of the function. So we're gonna just take a look at this grasshopper one more time. He starts on the log and he jumps and then he lands on the ground. So there are parts of this parabola that don't make sense. First of all, we don't care about the part of the parabola before he jumps. We just care about the part after he starts jumping. He goes up, he comes down, and as far as I know, grasshoppers don't drill down into the ground, so he probably stops when he hits the ground. So in terms of the domain, we're looking at a distance of zero to a distance of 3.5. And when we're looking at the range, we're looking from a lowest point of the ground, which is zero, up to a highest point of his max height, which is 16. So we're going to say that his domain, and you can write x, e, r, but really we're not doing x, we're doing d. So I'm going to say d, e, r to say that d is a real number. And his lowest possible distance was zero. His highest possible distance was 3.5 inches, and it's all the numbers in between, 0 and 3.5. I always point my signs towards the smaller number, which would be the 0. So I'm going to say 0 is less than or equal to d is less than or equal to 3.5. Now for the range, okay, it's not actually y this time, it's height, so I'm going to say h-e-r. Now his height, the lowest he can be is when he's on the ground at zero, and the highest he can be is when he's at the highest point, which is 16. So his heights are all the numbers in between zero and 16, and the arrows need to point towards the smaller number, which is zero. So zero is less than or equal to h is less than or equal to 16. And that's it.